I got a few questions about a recent claim that physicists have found a way to correct Einstein's theory so that black holes no longer have singularities. Isn't that kind of a big deal? Why isn't anyone talking about this? Let's have a look. Black holes and Einstein's theory have two defining properties. One is the event horizon, a closed surface from within which nothing, not even light, can escape. The other characteristic property is the singularity in the middle of the horizon. In Einstein's theory, you can't have one without the other. That's the brief summary of the penrose hawking singularity theorem. Whenever matter collapses to form a horizon, it'll also create a singularity. And everything that falls into a black hole will also inevitably fall into the singularity. Once you've crossed the black hole horizon, there's no escaping this fate. Welcome to the black hole California. But what is the singularity? Mathematically, the singularity is a place where time ends. In black holes, it's also accompanied by an infinite curvature of space-time. But most physicists, me included, think that this isn't actually what happens in a black hole. Rather, the singularity is probably just an indication that the mathematics of Einstein's theory breaks down. It's worth stressing that there's nothing mathematically wrong with a singularity. It's just that physicists think it's physically wrong. This is an expectation we take from other areas of physics. Whenever a singularity pops up in the maths, it just means that we're using the wrong mm. maths. Imagine, for example, that a water drop pinches off a tap. If you describe the drop as a fluid, then mathematically there's a singularity at the pinch off point. But physically, that just means that it's no good to describe water as a fluid at small scales. It really needs to be described by a different theory, one with atoms and molecules and so on. To come back to the black holes, the singularity inside of a black hole is also the origin of the black hole information loss problem, because the singularity is where information goes to die, basically. Physicists usually expect that getting rid of the singularity will require a theory for the quantum behavior of space and time, a theory of quantum gravity. If the authors of the new paper indeed solve that problem, this would be a big deal instead. So what did they actually do? The authors of the new paper say that they can modify the equations of general relativity so that the singularity goes away. The way that they do this is by adding an infinite number of new terms to the equations. These terms are called correction terms, which is why the Popular Science Report says that they corrected general relativity. An infinite number of terms might seem a bit wasteful, but the thing is that functions with infinite terms can behave much more nicely than those with finitely many. Forget about general relativity, just think about a single valued function, our good old friend f of x. Any polynomial with finite order will diverge at plus and minus infinity, but this is not the case Case, for example, for the sine function, which is an infinite polynomial. It's basically for the same reason that theories with an infinite number of correction terms can avoid problems that any finite number of such terms would bring. By the way, this video comes with a quiz that lets you check how much you understood. In case the idea with all those correction terms sounds good, well, here are the details. First, their solution only works in five dimensions or more, which is clearly stated in the paper, but not so clearly in the press release. This is basically the physics equivalent to saying we have cured Alzheimer in yeast. The other problem is that there are like hundreds of different ways to do the same thing. Indeed, even I wrote a paper about how you can get rid of the black hole singularity by fumbling with the equations of general relativity. So have lots of other people. I'm sure that the authors think their solution is particularly nice, and you know what? I agree, I like it. But does that make it right? Can you test this idea? Well, no, because last time I looked, we didn't live in five dimensions. If they can extend their result to three plus one dimensions, which I'm sure they'll eventually manage, then in principle, all these terms would also make corrections at the black hole horizon and that it have observable consequences in principle. In practice, though, I strongly doubt that they'd be large enough to measure. But the idea of an infinite number of corrections is generally applicable. 
You see, if you just make four or five arguments, the discussion will spiral out of control. It follows that the key to winning an argument is to just never stop talking. Did you know there's a free and easy way to learn more about the science behind all the videos that you've been watching? Yes, there is. Have a look at Brilliant. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their data science courses, which they just released. They all use real-world examples, like what it means to go viral on X. Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on algebra or large language models, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle, and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. Sounds good. I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina or scan the QR code. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.